So, drugs. I had a question from one of my uh, viewers, a certain Zanny the Slug 42069. I'll do everyone a favor and not read the numbers the other way. Anyway, they were asking about one of my other videos where I'm talking about the reason why people use stimulants. And I connected that with the quest for meaning that we all seem to have and how the stimulants basically trigger that system. And the subscriber said, why is it that the stimulants do that? Why do they connect to the search for meaning? So I thought I'd give an answer to that question here and kind of connect it to the larger process that we're you know, talking about in general. So as I mentioned in the other video, the seeking system, which is something that was developed by effective neuroscientists, is a system in the brain that is designed to encourage exploration of the environment. It generates an urge to seek, to expect, to investigate, it, to be motivated. Certain neurotransmitters are associated with these, uh, this system, and in this case, it's dopamine. Dopamine is one of the main brain chemicals that is released endogenously and organically when we're seeking, anticipating, and being motivated. In the brain, for those of you neuroscience nerds out there, it involves a medial forebrain bundle, which connects a lot of the regions from the lower brain stem and the midbrain to the higher regions in the medial frontal cort cortex. Okay, so enough about that. What is it all about? This system corresponds to intense interest, engaged curiosity, eager anticipation in humans. And if you look at the circuitry there, this is also found in many other animals. All the mammals have the same kind of circuitry in the brain. So when you stimulate this area, in fact, in humans directly stimulate it, they will tell you that they feel like something very interesting is going on. They have an intense feeling of environmentally engaged aliveness. So what's going on then with the stimulant, uh, the stimulant drugs, methamphetamines, cocaine, those drugs, is that they artificially stimulate this system. Now, that's kind of the short answer to the question that Zanny brought up. But if you look at the seeking system in general, it's got a connection to dreams and to storytelling. And that's really what I thought was interesting about this that I wanted to bring up in my video here where I, and this of course being the Imaginarium where I'm connecting story and brain and mental health all together, dreams to get in, in, in an organic sort of way. So the seeking system is an endogenous innate system that it functions in all vertebrates. And what it does is it reacts to certain environmental cues and engages the system so that the animal, whatever the animal it is, will explore the environment and find more, try to seek out more resources or whatever. In humans, it's connected to our dreaming state and REM sleep or rapid eye movement sleep. If you de deprive rapid eye movement in animals, including humans, they will get a reciprocal increase in the seeking system activity. So what is that all about? Well, as we know from other videos that I've talked about, dreaming is about creating stories with the express goal of finding meaning in one's life. That's the whole purpose of the dreaming system. It's running all the time in the background, but when we're asleep, of course, we're not doing anything else. And so it really comes to the forefront. And many times we can remember even how intense that activity is. It finds its way into autobiographical memory, which we use in therapy, of course. If you pharmacologically dampen that, that seeking system, on the other hand, people will tell you that they feel down in the dumps. They have low energy. They feel like things are meaningless. So being derived of me, being deprived of meaning making activity, it seems is strongly associated with this kind of depressed mood state. So then how does this relate to story and dreams? It, it, it all connects back to the meaning making process. 
we create meaning not out of the blue, but out of stories. And the seeking system is very much engaged and rewarding when we find meaning, when we're able to put all the pieces together and say, oh, that's what this, this stuff is all about. Imagine if our brain didn't do this, then everything that came at us from the environment would feel completely meaningless and empty. And we would have no way of knowing what, what anything meant. Well, obviously it doesn't work like that because you can't survive like that. So early in evolution, way before humans, probably before mammals, way before pretty much everything we know, very deep in the evolutionary history, brains evolved in order to seek meaning in the environment, meaning for the organism in particular. And that what that's all about is taking the sensory data, organizing it, processing it into a story. And that's what we're doing in dreams. We're putting together the story of us only because we're humans, we can use symbols and metaphors because we're really good at that. And so that's what those stories wind up becoming in storytelling and fiction writing, particularly in fantasy writing, which I'm a huge fan of, you can use the metaphors in a, in a very literal and concrete sort of way to really drive home the meaning that the storytelling mechanism is putting together. So now the problem then with the stimulants is that they are artificially hitting this natural system. They're fooling you. It's an illusion. They're fooling you into thinking that something immensely interesting and amazing is going on. But of course, once the drug wears off, you're back to square zero. And a lot of times folks that I've worked with that are struggling with stimulant addictions crash really hard. It's because since they've artificially stimulated the seeking system, they deplete it temporarily. And so then they're fooled into another illusion, which is that nothing meaningful is going on in their life. So they're bouncing back and forth between super interesting, meaningful, engaging and exciting to empty, meaningless void and horror. And it's a, it's a terrible, terrible situation. It's very hard on the body. And it's, of course, very hard on mental health. So it's a great, great struggle for these folks. So that's what I've got for you today. That connects, hopefully, for you, the stimulants, the meaning-making neuroscience, as well as the dream-related meaning organization process that goes on in the brain, and how all this stuff ties together in one of our favorite activities, which is telling ourselves stories and telling other people stories and enjoying stories because stories trigger this system naturally. They'll give you meaning if it's a good story anyway, and it's not just a silly nonsense. It'll bring things all together for you and you'll go, oh, wow, that's a very profound story. It's a very meaningful story. Our great myths uh, all around the world uh, do this to fantastic effect. And why are they so effective? It's because they are telling us a story that organizes everything together into one coherent narrative that hits the seeking system in a powerful way that's lasting. So that's what I got for you today. Hope you enjoyed that. Make sure you like and subscribe and all that jazz. Check out the website, of course, uh, ericgoodwin.com. I got lots of other stuff over there for you. And I'll see you next time.